On today's design review, we're going to review a website of a legal firm. We're going to talk about the design, layout, composition, colors, messaging. It's going to be interesting, so stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome to another website review. This website was sent to us by Amber. By the way, if you wanna send your own website for review, make sure you follow on Instagram where every week I do kind of a call to action to send websites for reviews and I might review your website as well. For now, let's dive into this page of a company called Page Legal. This is the first thing that we see when we land on the website. Now, usually the way I think about web design or at least the hero section of a homepage, I think it really needs to quickly answer the question, what is this place? What do they do here and what's in it for me? And looking at this, I think I can easily see who owns this page, Page Legal, that's quite clear. Prepare today for what you want tomorrow. And I see a photo, a big photo of two senior people. So I think the overall concept is quite clear and I think the messaging wise, it's good because it's clear that it's probably something with you know pension planning or some kind of a financial planning for the future. So I think on a high level communication wise, it works. However, I am still a little bit confused because prepare today for what you want tomorrow and then I see senior people, I kind of keeps me a little bit confused as to who's the target market here. Is it young people who need to plan for when they're gonna be senior or is it senior people who are need to plan what will happen maybe after they die or something like that. So there is a little bit of something confusing. Let me see if I read this. Page Legal offer a variety of legal services to individuals or organization. They can have control over their personal information. So that does not clarify the question. And there is a call to action that says start now. Now it's good. A lot of people forget to have clear call to action. However, start now as a call to action. Start doing what now? That is not clear for a button. Is that what? Uh, sending an application, contacting somebody. That is not, start now is not a very clear call to action in this context. Now, let me talk about navigation here for a little bit to get started. So first of all, page legal, that's clear and readable. However, there is also a sub subtext here let me see if I can zoom that. A professional limited liability company. That is totally unreadable um, due to the fact that it's so small here and it just confuses or adds kind of like tiny, just like visual clutter to this area here. So I would definitely remove that. It's not helpful. Second thing in the navigation here, as you can see, the logo is clickable and it takes you to the home, which is very you know, normal best practice for every website. Most people know that you click on the logo, you get to the homepage. Then why do we actually need another button that says home? You probably don't need this and you can reduce this. It will simplify and, you know, again, remove visual clutter. Basically high level, you always want to remove visual clutter because there's a limited n number of details that a, a person visiting your website or looking at your design can grasp at a certain moment. And if you put in more information, there are more things for them to you know, view, process, memorize. Um, it just takes up their mental effort. So in general, you wanna decrease that. You wanna remove what's not necessary at this point. So the home button is definitely unnecessary at this point. Um, also something you can see that the selected and even the hover state of it is a dark blue, which is definitely unreadable. And I would probably without even checking this, I can assume it's not very accessible. So it's low contrast and definitely if this website is oriented at senior people. You have to take note and you have to make sure that it's super visible and, and contrasted. So dark blue on, on a blue doesn't not such a good color combination. Um, this is weird though that when I hover over individuals, you see kind of a drop down menu, but it has only one thing that says wheels packages. And when you hover it, it completely disappears because now it's dark black on dark black. So something here definitely needs to change in terms of, you know, um, in terms of the colors, but also I think, I don't know, having a drop down menu with only one item, I always think, why didn't they just 
could then will packages here. I don't know. I'm not sure about this. Um, then we have these buttons. And then we have kind of like the call to action. So free initial consultation. So if that's what they want you to do, maybe you would write on the big call to action, free initial consultation. That would make a better call to action than this. So they put this here and then they put the phone number and then they put the email as well. Now, I think there is value for companies putting their phone number big up front because a lot of times specifically for businesses who work with you know they they the, the way that you contact them is on the phone putting the the phone number up in the front up in the navigation is actually a good thing it shows that you're not trying to hide like a lot of companies trying to hide the way because they don't want their support uh, to talk to you on the phone. So they're hiding the way to contact them. And it pisses a lot of users off. Ah, you have to search for how to contact, then you have to fill a form and you can't actually talk to a person. When a company puts their phone number in the front in big, it sends the message that you do want to talk to them. And that's I feel that's good in this context. However, putting the entire email here, I don't think makes sense, right? You probably have this I mean, maybe you would put a but button that says email or make this free initial consultation, but putting both phone number in clear and the image, again, I think this kind of leads to a visual clutter. Maybe you would replace this whole email with just an icon of an email and an icon of a phone number. I don't know, but you probably want to reduce this because as you can see, there's a lot going on in this navigation bar. Next thing I want to talk about is this image, which is... I think it's a good image um, quality wise. I think it's good. It's nice. It's on white. It's kind of like inspiring. However, I think the crop of this image is not very well. You can see that the like the the women's the woman's face is cropped at the chin, um, while there is still top uh, there is still space above uh, the man's head. Now, <clears throat> in general, when you're cropping photos, it's always better to crop the forehead than to crop the chin. I think that if you would move the image up, crop the, the photo in his forehead and leave more space um, for the woman at the bottom, I think this would look much, much better. There's something uncomfortable at seeing somebody like at the chin level. Anyway, going down to the offerings. So now we have kind of a list, okay? Protect your family, protect your privacy, protect your kids. And my first issue here would be that I don't think that the way this is laid out is laid out at, at the best way for readability and and you know and to to con actually consume this information. So let's get started with the icons, right? What is the what is the the purpose of an icon besides making things look nicer and adding a little bit of style and personality? Usually, it helps you because we want to scan things. People on the internet they rather not read, so they want to scan first. The The icons are the first thing that allows you to scan without actually reading so that you can glance and see if what you're looking for or is, or is relevant for you. That's why you would probably want to position the icons before above or to the left of because we were reading from left to right. You want to position them, either position them on the left side or position them above the title. Because right now you actually have to read this, read this, and only then you get to the icon. And then what's the purpose? Well, how is this helping me at this point? So I think in terms of the layout, I would change things around. But even in terms of the layout, like left, right, left, right here, you know, there's, uh, I would say design cliche on the web right now. And you can see this on every website. And you might say that this is boring when you have like three columns or kind of like features or benefits or something like that. It's boring. Everybody does that like icon, icon, icon below text, 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 right? It's boring, but it's useful. It's a useful uh, way to arrange text and information. I mean, right now I can barely see one, two, three, four, and then I have to scroll to see the fifth. And I bet that if they would just make like three columns here, three and then two columns, you could fit all this information without me having to scroll it, just looking at it and it will be much more digestible for you to read. The other thing I have to say is about the font of the body text. And uh, let me try and zoom in. I don't know if you can see, but definitely on my screen, it's not very readable. And again, I think my sense here is this this website specifically is oriented for 
people who are not young anymore, they might have difficult to read small, super light font, which is not rendering super well here if you don't have a, like a retina screen. So I don't think that this is a good choice of body font. Moving on, then we have individual and organization. I have to admit here that I'm not sure why this is an individual and this is organization. Like idea-wise, communication-wise, this is a heart and this is usually an idea. So why is, like usually individual and organization, you want to see maybe one versus many. I mean, that's, I think, what you want to, when you communicate, that's what you want to talk about. Here's options for one and here's options for many. And now you see here's heart and here's an idea. Why? I mean, I don't think it actually helps to communicate what the differences are here. Um, and then you have call to action. And whoa, that is a, a, a weird way for a form to work. So you click here and then you start doing something here. Uh, this is not, okay, so there's few issues with this form. First of all, usually in terms of best practices, you wanna always have a label on top, on the top left corner of the form so you would always be in context of what information you're filling right now. The, the label stays, but it moves to the right side, which again is very weird because we are reading left to right. So the label being on the right side doesn't make any sense. Now there's another issue where the text itself in the form is a very, very light gray and um, is not very readable. So in terms of, again, accessibility, this is highly, highly unreadable and it's very hard to fill in this form. So I would redesign this, I'm not really sure about. I would probably, I think it would be better if, you know, the, before you click the form, it's kind of gray and then when it's selected, maybe it's blue with a higher contrast, probably would be a better design. And before the header, we have some kind of a, icon of a PDF and that says template PDF PDF. I have no idea what that is. Um, I can open it up on a new tab and it's kind of a client intake form. Okay, I would definitely write here client intake form and use maybe use the, the, the PDF image if you want to convey that it's a PDF, but definitely not use template PDF dot PDF because that's totally meaningless. Uh, if you want people to check this out, if you want people to download this and fill them up, give them some context as to what this thing is. Um, let's check out another page just so that we can see what goes on here. So this is the about us. I clicked it again, as you can see, selected um, is not no, does not look very good with the dark blue. Then we have this about us and then meet the team. So here I have a tiny little bit of an issue that you can see that the sky here is blue, but it's a little bit of a different shade than the, the color of the navigation itself. I think this would be very, very easy to fix in Photoshop so that the colors would match because right now it's just, it looks like a mistake. Um, and it's kind of a little bit annoying. And so either you want to have contrast or you want to have this seamless, but having a little different in the shade and the in the U here just makes it look a little bit less professional, I would say. In terms of meet the team, Joy Pay's founder, principal, I'm looking at this text and I when you look at a text like this and my initial feeling before even reading this is overwhelm. Now, the reason I feel overwhelm is because I see a huge chunk of text and this is a dense text. Remember what I said previously, people do not like to read on the web. We need to format the text and design it in a way that will make it easier for them to process. So there's multiple things that could be improved in this paragraph alone. First of all, I feel like the line height is very, very tight. You should probably open up what's called letting or line height in CSS, open it up a little bit so there's a little bit more space in between the line. Then in terms of just formatting, adding different paragraph and when the paragraph are spaced makes it easier to scan the content and understand quickly if this is something that we want to dive deep into it. Just a huge chunk of the of text without space unformatted is very, very intimidating. What you want to do is, I don't want to read this and it's true for this as well. In terms of the mi vision and mission, I mean, at least here we have some paragraphs, 
but the paragraphs are very long. Let me just count like an average line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's an average of 20 words per line. And this is a lot. When you're usually making a paragraph, um, putting something more than like 11 words on average in a line makes it really hard to read. When the lines are very long, we're actually losing track in the middle and it makes it hard for us to concentrate and read. So I think if you would make this column a little bit um, narrower and, and have the lines break faster, it would make reading this, uh, this whole text a little bit more readable. At the end of, at the end of pages, at the, like this ends text and then a footer, usually at the end of a text, you wanna have some kind of a call to action. So on the main page, that was okay because we had kind of a call to action. You're invited to call or an email. But even in, on different pages, you wanna make sure that people don't get to the end of a page and then like, so what do I do now? You always wanna lead them into the next thing. So the la next thing can be an article, it can be you know another page, some other content or contact, but you wanna make sure that they reach the end and they have something else to do. Otherwise they're like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess I'm done here. And then they close the website and they leave. All right, I hope you've found this useful. I love helping you improve your design and giving you some review. I hope you, uh, you learned from this. Obviously, um, this was all said in the context of trying to help improve this website and your future design. So I fully respect who made this, you know, design under, you know, the, the current constraints of the project. I wish you good luck and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.